there! We have tracked this month's hottest board games based on sales, popularity, crowdfunding, traffic, and news. Want to know which games are gaining ground right now and why? Well, then you're in the right spot as we list the top 10 trending titles with Momentum. Hey, I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and our countdown is going to start off on a slightly different foot this month, with the game coming in at spot number 14 on our countdown. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get back to the reason why that is later on, but first, let's crack open the book on The Elder Scrolls Betrayal of the Second Era, which had a game found campaign that concluded on April 21st after raising $4.6 million towards its estimated fulfillment date in September of 2024. The Elder Scrolls Betrayal of the Second Era is a one to four player cooperative tabletop adventure in which players uncover the evil schemes of the Order of the Black Worm. As in the Elder Scrolls video games, players will travel on an epic journey balancing exploration, character building, dungeon diving, and close quarters combat. The board game version is being published by Chip Theory Games, so it's planned to be produced with die cut neoprene player mats, custom heat transfer dice and tokens, PVC cards and boards, custom plastic inserts and storage containers, and lots of hefty plastic chips. All of which will definitely be keeping gamers on their toes. Also keeping gamers on their toes is the sponsor that helped make this episode possible, Phoenix Performance Coaching, which is on a mission to help tabletop gamers embark on a new adventure by getting into the best shape of their life. Phoenix Performance Coaching provides online coaching to empower tabletop gamers to reclaim their health, become pain-free, and end the stigma that tabletop gamers are unhealthy. Presented by fellow gamer and fitness trainer Jordan Yachlin, who's earned a Bachelor of Science degree in exercise science, specializing in health fitness and exercise physiology. For more information about this and a free 14-day trial, follow the link in this video's description to find out more about improving your health with Phoenix Performance Coaching, who's already helped over 300 clients achieve their fitness goals. Falling into place now in spot number 13 is Project L, a fast-paced tile-matching puzzler with multi-layered 3D acrylic pieces. Starting with just two basic pieces, players will use three actions each turn to develop a powerful engine, paving the way for completing even the most difficult puzzles. And completing puzzles awards points and new pieces, further fueling the player's puzzle performance engine. Project L scored a W by successfully completing a fundraising campaign of its own back in mid-April in which 9,588 backers pledged to bring a reprint and a new expansion for the game to life this December. But a game making available waves do now... I get it. I get what I'm trying to say here. But a game that's making waves due to its availability right now is La Jerusalem Anno Domini based on the best-selling book. The Jerusalem game centers around the Last Supper, during which players jockey to place their followers near the apostles who sit at the table, among other objectives. The game includes deck building, worker placement, resource management, and a thematic mechanism of favors. As such, Jerusalem Anno Domini is designed with the goal of providing a variety of challenges with a wide range of possibilities and multiple ways to earn points and earn your place at the head of the table with victory. Welcome now to the Northern Expanse, a place where nature is still unexplored, mystical, and dangerous. This is the wilderness in which you'll find this month's 11th highest performer, Beast, in which hunters cooperate to track and take down ancient beasts threatening their settlements. One player takes on the role of the beast, while the others set out as beast hunters. The beast uses a deck of direction cards to move over forests, swamps, and caverns, using guile and deceit to hide its tracks from the hunters. Now, to win, the hunters need to cooperate every step of the way, lest they be outmaneuvered and outplayed by the beast. And, as the gamers who've been hunting this game can attest to, another beast that they've been contending with has been the beast of Kickstarter fulfillment. Originally funded in October of 2021, with an estimated fulfillment target of last summer, the beast that is the beast finally started shipping to its backers a couple of months ago. And now that the game is in the hands of its players, well, we'll soon see if this beast is actually a beauty. 
Stepping in next is a game that's been on a journey of its own since it was successfully kickstarted back in January of 2021, Darwin's Journey. Now, the game has finally nearly finished its fulfillment to its campaign backers, who now have the opportunity to join Charles Darwin's adventures through the Galapagos Islands in this worker placement game. However, the game is billed as more than just a worker placement game, as being a worker progression system, with each worker having to study the disciplines that are prerequisites to perform several actions in the game, such as exploration, correspondence, gathering, and dispatching items that they'll collect on the island to museums in order to contribute to the human knowledge of biology. After going through its own two-year period of evolution, this game is now finally arriving in the hands of its players, resulting in the game being dissected and discussed as it rests at number 10 on our list. Speaking of which, so why did this month's top 10 start with number 14? Well, it's because I'm trying something a little bit different this time. Four of the games in this month's top 10 are ones that have already appeared and have been spoken about several months in a row now, such as the game coming in at number 9, Ark Nova. Instead of retreading the familiar ground once again for these four particular titles, I thought I'd give each of those a quick mention and then continue on to the other games that haven't been recently reviewed, such as the game in the eighth position this month, Hegemony, Lead Your Class to Victory. Hegemony is a card-driven board game for two to four players that puts you, yes you, or someone standing right next to you, in the role of an asymmetric political socioeconomic faction either the working class, the middle class, capitalists, or the state itself. And this hegemony doesn't shy away from its theme, also coming with a 42-page booklet discussing each of the political science concepts that the game's founded on and how each one is incorporated into the gameplay. And this booklet doesn't fool around. It's written by multiple authors with doctorates on the subject. <laughs> It's quite, quite the read. Hegemony Lead Your Class to Victory has been shipping to its Kickstarter backers for the past couple of months, myself included, and now I am looking forward to getting it to the table once again, just as soon as my head stops spinning from my previous play of the game. Numbers 6 and 7 have also appeared on the countdown multiple times recently, Frosthaven and Heat Pedal to the Metal, respectively. Now, interestingly, the game at position number 5 is one that used to appear frequently several years ago, and now has returned with a miniaturized little tiny version. It's a Azul Mini, and it's a condensed version of the wildly popular tile placement game that has sold over 2 million copies to date. And just like in its larger sized predecessor, players of Azul Mini take turns drafting colored tiles to place on their board, scoring points for creating specific patterns, and completing sets. But if you're still new to Azul, whether regular sized or miniaturized, or if you just want to sharpen your skills, Board Game Geek user The Board Gamer has posted a beginner's strategy tips and tricks article on the game's forums, which I'll include a link to in this video's description. With these helpful tips, you may just become the best Azul player on Earth, which, incidentally, is the name of the last of the returning games being summarized, Earth, the strategic, card-driven ecosystem pattern-building sensation sweeping the nation and planet of the same name, Earth. Flawless, Marler. Earth, which orbits number four this month. Which brings us to this month's top three performers, starting with the cooperative and deluxe Pantheon edition of Santorini, which wrapped up its Kickstarter campaign just last week, now starting development towards its target release date in May of next year. This Pantheon edition includes its Golden Fleece expansion, all its previously released promo cards, and many new cards as well. Additionally, many of the cards have been revamped, reworked, and rebalanced. What's more, its Kickstarter also included a Riddle of the Sphinx expansion with an adventure book containing 22 unique cooperative scenarios across the Greek Isles and a single player option. But Azul and Santorini aren't the only older games climbing back onto our top 10. Perhaps this month's biggest surprise, to me, is the appearance of Reiner Knizia's King's Road from 2017, in which nobles attempt to gain power and influence within the king's many provinces by playing cards from identical 11-card decks. As the king travels along the road that connects all the major landmarks within his territory, he'll also allow the most influential noble in each region to govern in his Instead. And over time, the most favored noble will win the game. This one took a little digging to figure out exactly what out there caused a sudden surge of traffic and discussion about this game. True, it was successfully kickstarted, but 
That was back in 2017, and the most recent update posted on its crowdfunding page was back in November of that same year. Eventually, I discovered that King's Road was recently featured as an online retailer's deal of the day on sale for $5 in the US, which seems to definitely be a contributing factor to its sudden leap up the charts. And hey, to be honest, if I had stumbled onto this game being offered for five bucks, I likely would have dove into researching it as well to find out more about it. So, whoo, King's Road, you've earned your spot at spot number two, and I just went off script, so I don't know how to end this segment. So I am flawless, Marler. And this month's biggest bounder up the charts is the brand new, deluxified edition of Raw, first published in 1999 and exhumed from its publishing tomb by a GameFound crowdfunding campaign that ran in May of last year. Raw is an auction and set collection game with an ancient Egyptian theme in which players bid for tiles, influencing pharaohs, building monuments, farming, paying homage to the gods, and advancing their culture's technology. This new exclusive edition of Raw includes the core game, 180 premium wooden auction tiles, a wooden epoch counter, 80 metal point tablets, a tile bag, and all the other unlocked stretch goals from the campaign, giving this version of Raw a striking table presence. Which makes it no wonder why Raw has climbed into the top spot on this month's list the most popular games. A list which admittedly included a lot of Kickstarters this time, which can be often be difficult to track down. But for games that you can find right now, continue on to our Board Game Buyer's Guide, which tracks this month's newest releases and restocks, with game recommendations, our picks and best bets, and a few surprises along the way. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you over there.